Hey everyone, in cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech, and AI. I really appreciate all your support on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It means so much to me and the Nelson Hilliard team. And make sure you remember to click the notification bell when you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all the latest shows. If you like cloud tech blogs on cybersecurity, blockchain, and all cloud tech topics, be sure to check out and subscribe to our latest blogs. Below there is a link. And watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Linthicum, who is the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. And if you don't want to watch David and I talking on the shows, which I find it hard to believe, all our shows are on Stitcher and iTunes as podcasts. I've also included a link below. Remember to connect and reach out to me and my team. Below in the description box are the social media links for LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This week, Google is being sued for tracking you even when your location history is turned off. Google now faces a potential class action lawsuit over the revelation that it continues to store users' location data even if they turn off the location history. The lawsuit, which was filed on Friday, the day actually Google updated its help page to clarify that with location history off, it still stores some location data in other services such as Google Search and maps. The lawsuit accuses Google of falsely representing what history location off means to its millions of iPhone and Android users and seeks a class action status consisting of an Android class and an iPhone class. Google expressly represented to its users of its operating system and apps that the activation of certain settings will prevent the tracking of users' geolocations. The representation was false, the suit says, according to the court filing posted by Ars Technica. This week sees spyware firm Spyphone leaves customers' data recordings exposed online. Thousands of spyware users and those being monitored have had their information leaked to the public domain. It appears that an oversight by the spyware developer Spyphone has led to the online leak of terabytes of data belonging not just to customers, but also to their targets. The data included 44,000 unique email addresses, many likely belonging to the people the targeted phones had connected with. A spy phone spokesman confirmed the leak to the publication and said the incident impacted over 2,000 customers. The spokesperson also expressed relief that a researcher had found the weak security point and said Spyphone was investigating the incident. This week, Dell EMC launches PowerEdge MX and it will be available globally at the beginning of September 2018. Touted by the company as being designed for software-defined data center, Dell EMC said the PowerEdge MX is capable of supporting a combination of virtualization software-defined storage, software-defined networking, artificial intelligence, and big data projects. President and General Manager of Dell EMC Server and Infrastructure Systems, Ashley Gurak Puwala, said, and I hope I said that correctly, Ashley, while emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, IoT, and software-defined storage and networking offer competitive benefits, their workloads can be difficult to predict and pose new challenges for IT departments. PowerEdge MX enables a modular approach to flexibility build and combined compute, storage and networking so organizations can transform their IT in a way that optimizes resources and offers investment protection for future generations of technological advances. This week sees artificial intelligence system that can identify cancer tumors better than humans. Scientists have developed an artificial intelligence system that can accurately detect tiny specks of lung cancer in CT scans, which radiologists have a difficult time identifying. The AI system is about 95% accurate compared to 65% when done by human eyes, researchers have said. Rodney Lalonde, a doctoral candidate at the University of Central Florida in the US, said, we use the brain as a model to create our system. The approach is similar to the algorithms that facial recognition software uses. It scans thousands of faces looking for a particular pattern to find its match. The group fed more than 1,000 CT scans into the software they developed to help the computer learn to look for the tumors. They had to teach the computer different things to help it learn properly. The system was taught to ignore other tissues, 
nerves and other masses it encountered in the CT scans and analysed lung tissues. I'm Brad Nelson and thanks for watching this week's Cloud Tech News. Get in touch if your company has a news story that you'd like to feature on the show. You can email us at media at nelsonhilliard.com and remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. And you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And you can also check out the latest shows with David Linthicum and the podcast link in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.